We have here an image of NGC 4736 early in the development process. The data was gathered using a Player One Aries M camera through a 203mm or 8 inch SCT telescope just last night. The moon was at about 70% full brilliance, so there is a bit of background illumination of the atmosphere, but the target was over 100 degrees off from the moon, so the gradient is very slight. Now, if you have ever shot LRGB, RGB, or narrowband images, and are a user of Blur Exterminator, you have probably wondered if you should run Blur Exterminator before you combine the channels, which is time consuming, or if you should combine the channels and then run Blur Exterminator, which is much faster, because in the first, you would have to run Blur Exterminator on each separate channel, and that's going to take time, but in the latter, you can combine all the channels, which is a quick process, and then run Blur Exterminator on the combination. I decided to test this while developing this image of the Crocsi Galaxy. So with LRGB, a pretty typical development order would be to combine the three channels, then run Blur Exterminator, remove the stars with a tool like Star Exterminator, then do a histogram stretch. At this point, I personally would recommend running Noise Exterminator. If you run the Noise Exterminator before the histogram stretch, the Noise Exterminator will create artifacts in the RGB channels, but if you run the histogram stretch and then do any further editing processes such as curves, transformations, etc., then you just fine tuning any noise in the image along with whatever you're editing. So after the histogram stretch and running noise exterminator, then do your curves transformation and then run any final editing processes on the RGB channels. So in my experiment here, I'm going to use that developing order. Except, in one sequence, I'm going to run the Blur Exterminator on the separate R, G, and B channels before combining them with the Channel Combination tool. And in the other sequence, I'm going to combine the RGB channels with the Channel Combination tool. And then run the Blur Exterminator on the combined information. By the way, if you're wondering why I don't also combine the Luminance channel at this time, one Konehero's own advice is to combine the RGB information on the Channel Combination tool and edit it all together and do the same, likewise, on the Luminance channel, and then combine the RGB and Luminance channels in the LRGB combination tool. A link is provided below. So let's proceed. First, I'm going to combine the RGB information and then run the Blur Exterminator on it. The channels have already been prepped by star aligning them, so that the information in each channel lines up perfectly with the Luminance channel. The combined RGB channel will need to have an image solve run on it and then spectrophotometric color calibration done. Then I'm going to run the Blur Exterminator on each separate RGB channel and the RGB combined channel. I'm first going to run Blur Exterminator using the correct only mode to round out any stars that may have been shifted through errors in guiding last night. And then I'm going to run the Blur Exterminator in the default mode to deconvolve the stars as well as sharpen up the image of the Crocsi Galaxy. When it's all done, we get two plates to examine. One called RGB before BXT, in which the RGB channels were combined before the Blur Exterminator was run, and one called RGB after BXT, in which the Blur Exterminator was run separately on the red, green, and blue channels. For reference, RGB combined before is left. The exact same processes have otherwise been used in both plates. Again, that is Blur Exterminator run in the correct mode and then the default mode. There is an immediate and evident difference between the two plates. On the left, where the Blur Exterminator was run after the RGB channels had been combined, the background is darker and the image is more contrasty. However, less fine detail has been preserved within the galactic structure. The image on the right is less contrasty, and there is clearly more detail preserved in the galactic structure. Let's take a quick closer look at the cores of both galaxies. And up close, we can see the very same thing. The image in which the Blur Exterminator was run on the separate channels preserves more data, more information within the channel. Not only that, but looking at it up close, we can see it is less noisy too. Or you might say the noise has been made very fine, so it blends in very smoothly within the image. Now human perception is naturally drawn toward more contrasty images, in the same way that human perception is naturally drawn toward higher saturation. This is what causes new photographers to gravitate toward the error of over-contrasting and hypersaturating their images. We have a tendency to think more contrast and more saturation are better. However, especially when developing images, lower contrast is better. You want a low contrast or flat image. Flat meaning that the luminance curve is more level. 
Because such images preserve information better, information which can be developed out in processing, ultimately yielding more detail. And it is clearly evident to me that the image on the right, where I have gone through the painstaking process of running Blur Exterminator separately on the red, green, and blue channels before combining them with the channel combination tool, is a superior image. But nothing speaks as loud as the hard evidence from direct experimentation. So let's develop them using identical techniques. This isn't really a video on developing techniques, so I'll just tell you. I began in the standard way by using Star Exterminator to remove the stars. Then, I gave both images a histogram stretch according to the histogram theory that I covered in my video, perfect histograms in 60 seconds, ran Noise Exterminator on both images, and then did a Curves Transformation using the same theory that I covered in my video, Unleash the Power of Curves Transformation. Finally, Blur Exterminator was run again on both images, this time with sharpened stars turned down all the way to zero so that Blur Exterminator would only sharpen the structure of the galaxy. By this time, we will definitely have a very good idea of which method will yield the superior image. Now, both images are developed using the same methods. The image on the left is the one where the Blur Exterminator was run after combining the RGB channels, and the image on the right is the one where the Blur Exterminator was run separately on the R, G, and B channels, and then they were combined. As you can see, the image on the right has richer color and finer detail preserved. You can ignore what appears to be blown out detail in the middle. I haven't finished adjusting the histogram curve of that, but that will disappear. And all the detail within the Crocs Eye Galaxy will be pulled out before I am done. But, from this experiment, we can definitely say that the superior technique is the more time-consuming way. Run the Blur Exterminator separately on the R, G, and B channels before combining them. And the recommended order is to first run Blur Exterminator on the correct-only mode. You may not need to, but if there are any stars that are slightly out of shape, it will correct them. It will get everything looking really good for further development. And then, run the Blur Exterminator in default mode. And after Blur Exterminator has worked its magic, then you can use the channel combination tool to combine your R, G, and B channels. And this should give you a noticeably better outcome than combining R, G, and B first and then running Blur Exterminator. I'll grant you it's a lot faster to combine the R, G, and B channels first because running the Blur Exterminator takes some time. But the way I look at things, if we spend all night or even multiple nights collecting data on a single target, we might as well get the very most out of the development. Now at this point, it's clear as crystal to me which image is the superior image, so I'm going to finish developing this image in Affinity Photo. And here's the final result. As always, thank you for watching. This channel has just grown so fast. 3,200 subscribers in a year, and still growing fast. I thank everybody for your interest, your support, your words of encouragement and advice. If you have any questions or comments on this method, please leave them in the comments below. And you know what comes next. Get out there and shoot the sky.